I'm never, I'm not nervous, that's the thing. I'm not nervous. Hi guys. I'm not nervous, but <laughs> I'm anxious. My father says do not be anxious for anything. But I'm a bit anxious. My heart is beating. <laughs> I didn't even plan on recording. I just turned on my video. I have refreshed UPS delivery page. I keep <laughs> more than 300 times this morning. Sorry guys. I've been at home. Today is my off day. <sighs> okay, so hmm. over here is the decision for the UK visa I applied for. And <laughs> guys. They've not told it and I'm a bit, I'm a little bit anxious. I'm not, I'm not afraid because <laughs> if you know what I've gone through, you turn it back so around. If you know what I've been through over this visa thing, if you know how many roadblocks that God has, <laughs> that God has, you know, showed me over and over again, like, I'm the one in charge of this. Stop worrying. Like at every stage, there's always something to worry about. There's always something to be scared about and all of that. And you know, and at every stage, God keeps saying, don't worry. So guys, let us see it together. <laughs> Let's just open it, okay? Because at this point, I don't think I'll be able to concentrate. <laughs> I don't know where. Oh, I see it now. <laughs> Ask me why I'm anxious, guys. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. I got it. Let me call my husband. <laughs> Tell me why I'm anxious, guys. See, if you know the roadblocks are faced. Like at every point, there's always something. And you know the funniest thing? I won't have to do anything. And God will just show up. Like, I won't have to. Guys, I won't. Ah, God. I'm sure if I send it to my family page, they will start calling me. Why is my hand shaking? <laughs> Let me call my husband. Hi, guys. So, um, sorry, I had to call my husband. Then I spoke to my friends Balaji and Christy we've been on a call since like three hours <laughs> we're just just in. so anyways um i know this must be a shock i i don't even know how i'm going to do this video because obviously this is still like months away we are still in what's today today is the second of may no june today is the second of june and i'm not i won't be traveling until august middle of august god willing so obviously it's still a long journey or a long way to go i still don't know how this vlog is going to go but obviously this is going to be a relocation vlog and yes and i know a lot of you have questions because obviously i am not done with my program here in the us and i know that <laughs> many of you will have something to say <laughs> but trust me even me, I am as flagabasted as you, okay? When I came to the US, I did not plan to move to the UK. And um, we had a plan, okay? We had a plan, but I don't want to talk about it yet. We'll talk about it later. When I left Nigeria, me and my husband planned that he was going to come over in April uh, of last year. <laughs> sorry, sorry, April of this year. Latest, like by April. Mm. No, he was going to, no, he was supposed to join me by December of last year. We are in June of 2023. So that was the plan. But obviously when it comes to US, nothing ever goes as planned because getting a visa date was an issue. And then, you know, and then it was in, it was when I came shortly after I came, it was in like October that I started having a leading in my spirit that I need to move to the UK. <laughs> and obviously I'm thinking like from where to where, like where to where. It, it did register in my head like, okay. So it became like a thing in my heart. Like my sister is in the UK, my niece is in the UK. And I realized that every time I talk to them, I always feel bad. 
my brother you know he has his own plans and I always feel bad that you know my family is scattered so I remember I called my husband one of the, I think in September or October that I don't really like how my family is scattered everywhere like I would like us to be together at least even in one country where we can you know so it was just that thing in my mind and as a then what was in my mind was I was hoping my sister would come to Canada with her family since our plan okay so i've already said our plan initially was that i was going to come to the u.s my husband would apply to the u.s and then we'll start to work our pr to canada permanently um but the plan was never to stay in the u.s i if you someone asked when i came and i said no i've never i've never felt led that i was supposed to live here mercy is calling me guys i'll call you guys later okay so where were we um yeah mercy just called me <laughs> Messi has been a part of this journey like she has been a part of this journey so so it became like a thing in my mind right i think as you remember in november i hosted a few friends around and you know we're talking about uk and i'm like who goes to uk uk is like nigeria extension i can never go to the uk it's canada it's canada and all of that and even as i was saying it all this bit is telling me you are joking so a series of events led to me now finally listening because when god wants to drive his points home he drives it home <laughs> because to me it was like god i didn't come to the u.s by myself you know you guys have heard the testimony how god provided how god made a way and all of that and then it now became a thing of you know and funny enough when this thing happened mercy said a word when i can when negotiating the incidents that led to this decision and you know she was like she made him she made mention of something that stuck with me since then till now she said you know sometimes god will lead you somewhere i only to reroute you to somewhere else and you know that word rerouting stood with me for a while because i kept thinking you know so god brought me here he routed me here and now he's rerouting me to his will the reason why he brought me here i don't know yet right because i, I don't want well we'll talk about the gist later but the gist of this video is i finally got my uk visa my husband hasn't gotten his own yet right so he's going to start applying you know to get his own and i'm i'm praying and i know like guys this visa if i told you the things my eyes have seen i remember when i decided to start applying for visa i didn't have shishi shishi you know but i just said and one thing that always be kept telling me one step at a time one step at a time do what you god is asking you to do now leave the rest to me so i remember i applied for schools and then i got accepted into the school i actually got accepted into four schools <laughs> and then i chose i you know with the help of the Holy spirit i chose the one that i really want to pursue because i'm thinking of a career switch so i'm like okay i think this course would you know it's not really a switch it's still in my career whatever but I, I, yeah i will explain those ones later so it was more in line with you know what i wanted to really do so so i went for it and so i accepted that one right i need to even go and decline the other schools that gave me admission um nottingham trent gave me admission hall is a busy hall also gave me admission um the school i'm going to give me two admissions yeah so i need to decline one anyway so um so when i when i applied and i applied and then in in like less than a month i got admission um because i applied i initially applied for january i wanted to leave in january but I didn't get admission because I was applying in December, which is obviously not going to work. So I just looked at when is the next one, which was September. So I applied to that one and they gave me, you know, I got admitted. So now it now became a thing of, so I got the conditional offer and it became a thing of where am I going to see the money? <laughs> because you have to pay a deposit of 5,000 pounds to be able to get an unconditional offer. That is the offer, right? and in a way i'm going to talk about later god you know i remember i called my i called a few people and they were discouraging to be honest like and then i started to rethink but yeah i should stay you know but yeah this be that but i'm like mm, no this is not what god asked me to god asked me to move and i just told god 
you are don't ask me to move if you have to move you have to make provision i did that was all i prayed about that was all i said and supernaturally to be honest supernaturally god provided i got the five thousand <laughs> i got it so and i paid it <laughs> all this while i did not calculate the real cost of this thing you know the bible said i want to view the house i'll not calculate me me because every time i try to sit down to calculate how much the visa application health insurance you know tuition fee and everything is going to cost me the other people say don't do it like i always feel like don't do it don't do it you know sometimes go ask but this i said don't do it take it one step at a time one step at a time and i'm so grateful that i listened because at every stage so i got the unconditional offer now it was time to write um what they call it the maintenance provide maintenance documents you know proof of fund everything every like at every when i take one step then the next step is became god what will i do and god will show up at the next step god what will i do and god will show up it just kept on being like that my husband let me just share this one testimony you know my husband went to have his um tuberculosis test today because in nigeria i didn't have to do that because i'm not applying from nigeria but my husband is and so obviously you guys already know we're going to be together soon god willing um so he did and he said he had already gotten to the office this morning before he realized that he did not take his visa sorry his passport and without your passport they will not do the test for you but he said holy spirit said you should go like that so he went and you know he got there he waited for a while because obviously they had system down and all of those things and he said when it was his turn to go it he went there and they asked him for his passport and he said he didn't have any he didn't have one however he came with a copy a colored copy of it and then they were like no they cannot attend to him without a passport and he said ah, so what they do they asked him to go to the customer service to go and book another date so he said no wahala so he went to the customer service so when he got there the guy there was like why are they asking you to go back where do you live he said he lives in kubwa and obviously this place is in central they were like no they should be able to attend to you so he minuted on his uh, copy and said go back they will let you my husband said when he went there he was like ah. he said i should give you this and that was how they accepted it and they asked him to go and sit down he said as he was about to go like five other people came and said ah please wait till we didn't bring our passport and they said no 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 they don't do like that so apparently it was only my husband he didn't know anybody there he did not know he did not know anybody the other people that didn't come with their passport were sent back he was the only one that they attended to <laughs> and the other testimony was it got it it did it said that to that day and it got his results sitting down there that very day that's today 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 so and that's just to tell you how god shows up right so we'll get to the roadblock the, the only issue is god did we not make the provision before the problem come no the problem will come and god, god will say do this do that do this and i just obey i just obey and supernaturally i just noticed that everything we needed everything we needed god just kept you know supplying it was like when i came to the u.s i told you i'll share the testimony i did not have to pay a dime right this one is not like particularly the same but it became a thing of i don't have like where am i going to if i actually sit down and calculate all the money i've spent I, I i where where from where you know where it's like if i had thought about it before i started I will not take the step because it there was no way right but god showed up and that was why i said that i wasn't scared about the visa because if in every season in every step god has continually showed that i'm the one in charge right just be still just be still it's not dependent on what you do it is me I'm the one in charge. So the reason why I was anxious was I just wanted to see it, right? It wasn't because I was afraid of anything. I just wanted to see it. And when I'm like that, my my heart rate, my heart rate tends to like be fast and makes me start to fidget, right? So that was what you were saying. But honestly, I wasn't scared. In short, my husband, we're talking about it. There were a few things. In short, hmm, guys, the day I was supposed to, so the people i applied with when i went for my thumbprint i did it i didn't do a vlog i just did a vlog of us traveling because i had to travel two hours mercy drove me two hours to alexandria from harrisonburg that's like two hours journey to so go and get my um, fingerprints done and two hours back 
my battery is about to go off what was i saying so um mercy drove me and then uh we drove two hours back so they gave me a sleep that's the sleep you use so it's not i don't know how it works in nigeria we're still trying to figure that out but over here they you when you go travel to do your fingerprint they will give you a sleep is that sleep that you now you see you, you will now send that sleep as long as well along with your passport and the application form and proof of um proof of education as why well, results um bc results and all those things and then proof of me being here like my visa for the us and then so i did a copy of all of those attached it with my two passports and then um with my application letter and sleep and you you send it to their office um, in New York, to UKVI office in New York, where they will process the visa. Now the problem is that I I did I I knew it when I collected that slip that I had five days. So they wrote it there that you have five days to send your document to the office. When I was buying, because you have to apply through a third party, VSF Global, they are the one who you apply through. They are the one who, like, at the intermediary between you and the UK. When I applied on their website, right, I paid the fee, paid everything. I also paid for a return courier service. So basically, you, I paid about $80 for them to send the document and then return it back to me, right? But when I finished, they did not send me a shipping label. So after I applied, I kept waiting for a shipping label. So when I did my fingerprint, I had five days, remember? But the five days, for some reason, I forgot that I had five days, right? So the first day, I sent them emails. They weren't responding. I called. Nobody was answering. They didn't even have a number to call, first of all. So I kept calling their offices in Canada. I called their office in, you know, in India. And nobody was responding. I tried to reach out to them via Twitter via email i didn't get any response so i decided to go and buy a new shipping label from ups and send my documents directly whilst i tried to get a refund which i eventually got um so because of that it delayed me three days right no it delayed me two days it was on the third day that i eventually now went the only problem is the third day is a friday mm -hmm. so and I don't, I just, when I got there uh, to UPS, I told them I wanted to send a document. They said, okay, do I want like flights so that they can like send it ASAP the very, to get there the next day? They were like, but there's no point because offices don't work on Saturday. So I might as well just use the normal one so that it will get the latest by Tuesday. I'm like, what am I in a hurry for? So I paid for them to send it there on Tuesday. Remember, I have just two days left. And this was a Friday. So I had Saturday and Sunday. So, um, but I didn't know, okay? Only for me to, no, I think Monday was the last day. Monday was like the last day that they had to receive it based on the instruction I got from the embassy where I went to do my fingerprint. So I got, it was on Sunday. So I had sent it and I'm like, okay, no, I've sent everything and all of that, whatever, whatever. On Sunday, I was sleeping. And that thing that always happens to me, like, it was when I'm sleeping that I remember things. And I wake up like, <laughs> you know, many times this UK thing, I've woken up in the middle of the night and I'll be wondering like, God, how is this going to happen? How is this going to happen? And God would tell me, better go back and sleep because I know send you a message. So I woke up and I was panicking. Oh my God. Like, I woke up and for, for some reason, that line came in my vision five days and I started calculating and I realized that and I started crying. I was afraid like, oh my God, because I have spent a lot of money. And when I read online, they said, if your document does not get there after five days, you have to go back and do your fingerprints and reapply for a visa. That is another 600 and something dollars, right? To be able to reapply. Where am I going to get the money from? And remember, I already have maintenance documents. So anyways, I was scared. I was I was worried. I called UPS. Is there a way? They said there's nothing they can do about it because it's already on the way. I went to the office, took Uber, went to the office to see that. Then they said they cannot interrupt a shipment that is already on the way. So I have to wait until Tuesday. It will get there on Tuesday. So there's nothing they can do about it. I remember I came home deflated. I was, you know, 
all this while the Holy Spirit said, Why are you panicking? What was your problem? Why can't you just be at peace? Why can't you just be still? It was in my mind to be still, but you know, I, I like everything being done properly. I was like, when I was in the car coming, I just said, you know what, God, I, it's in your hands. Whatever, see, I know you're the one who have started it this way. The way it has, as it has gotten to this point, I have no idea, right? So whatever happens, I leave it to you. So I came home, I called my husband. My husband was like, why are you worrying yourself? You are, are you the one that brought it here? So what's your problem? Allow God to finish his work. It was like, there's no way you have to pay another money. Not if God is the one leading you. So forget it. So he asked me, I'm like, even me, I've even forgotten about it. Because I came home and I needed, that was the day I recorded the video with um, uh, Shion. The one who talked about, you know, her TTC journey and her first time, like it took them one month to have sex. Yeah, so... I came back that day. That was because I was late to record. I was we were supposed to start recording earlier, but because of I had to like go to the office, so I came back. My mood was not like all high on that video. Eventually, it did because you know this is my passion. So um, we recorded the video, and I'm like, you know what, God, it's in your hands. My sister called me. I explained to her. I told my friends. My friends were like, you know what? Don't worry about it. It's going to work out. And I said, okay. And I just forgot about. I stopped worrying about it. And then my passport got there on Tuesday. And then on that same Tuesday, they sent me an email. My When I saw the email, my heart did gig in. Again, I told my heart to be still. So I opened the email and I saw that they were asking me to provide proof of what I've been doing since I graduated from my BA, my bachelor's um, degree. So I, my staff said they asked her the same thing. So I sent them all my employment contracts from 2017 to till date including my school admission letter and all so i sent it they didn't respond they didn't do anything and three days ago three nights ago i was about to sleep and i got an email from my school telling me that um my cast which is the number they give to you has been um ticked as used from ukvi so that means that they are finished processing my visa and i should get a response from them soon and I've read online that they usually send you their, whether they accept you or decline you, they will send you an email. If they decline you, they'll send you an email to tell you why and all of that. So I was expecting an email. I didn't get any email. Acceptance or deny, I didn't get. But remember that I, you know, had a return shipping label. So I was tracking my delivery. So I saw that UPS had already collected it that day um, and they were sending it. So it was going to get here today. And yeah, the rest is history. You guys know the end, the other story. So the thing I was bothered about, I didn't even need to be bothered about it. There was another thing that I did that I didn't even need to do. I just wasted money because it got to me, don't worry. But as the African girl that I am, who am I not worried? Okay. So I don't know if this is encouragement to anybody. It's, don't worry. Okay. Let God be God. Okay. Let God be God. Let God glorify himself. God will always glorify himself. If God is giving you a, a desire, if God is giving you, if God is a day, God will make provision. God always fund this project, right? So I don't know what you might be worried about and you're thinking, how would this be? Just leave it to God. Sometimes God just wants you to leave it to him. You have to stop working so that it can work. The two of you cannot be working together, right? So that is just to show you like every step of the way, just keeps telling me step back, step back step back stop it allow me stop it and you know he has proven himself again and again and i am super glad you know that i have my visa now now it's my husband's and obviously the mind i want to be fidgeting and scared because there was a part in the when i was doing my application that they asked um do you have a partner i said yes they asked for his details which i put and then they asked will your partner be traveling with you to the uk and i said no because obviously they're not traveling together at least that's what i understood it to be only for me to have like my school was having like a live meeting and they said when you get to that question put yes and explain but i'd already put no and i've already submitted so that won't to be the next thing to worry about because I'm like, God, I hope it's going to affect his application and all of that. And again, God said, allow me. 
so i'm allowing it okay and i have no doubts in my heart you know that you know my husband will be approved and <laughs> guys it's <laughs> that <laughs> it's just last week that uk brought a law last week oh, that uk <laughs> and that's what i'm saying that god <laughs> god puts me in a very very uncomfortable situation to push me to make this decision now because i will probably have made it because my own mindset is let me finish my school then we will do this and god said no do it now i didn't know why because that was in october last year that god started doing like do it now don't wait it was just last week that uk brought the rule that they're stopping dependent from january <laughs> Thank God is asking you to move. Please move. I'm so grateful. When that thing came, when it became a thing that, you know, you know, there was first of all in news that they were going to announce that they're going to stop dependent on visa. I said it cannot be. It can't be because I don't believe God will lead me to do all of this only for, no, it can't be. So when they said this was from January, I would have waited and then it would have been useless at the time. Right, so I'm still praying that they change their mind or the law is overturned because you know of the families that this may affect. But then I would have, even if they overturn it, the worry, the the you know, see when God say move, move. I'm so glad I did it when it because hmm, ah, what I went through before I eventually say, okay, God, I don't hear because when God is trying to tell you, he's telling you small, 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 you are not doing it when he will push you to do it, hmm, you don't have choice. And that's one thing I always notice about God. Me and my friend Christy was and Bolaji were talking about it on a different vision. Like when God is telling you to leave and you refuse to leave. It has happened to me severally. I've shared the testimony of how God gave me my jobs financially. And how God asked me to quit and I refuse to quit. If you, for me, oh, eh, because he's the driver of my life. And I've told him to drive me however he pleases. Okay, so I gave him authority. So when he's asking me to do something, I don't do it. I will do it eventually. By force or by force. It's go I'm going to do it. <laughs> So, anyway, so that happened, and here we are. If you're seeing this video, obviously everything went well, <laughs> and I'm praying that you will see it. I am excited, and I can't wait to see my husband again. I am so, I've missed him so much, guys. You have no idea. I've missed him so much. I can't wait to be in his arms, to sleep on his chest, so, you know yeah i can't wait i really can't wait and i'm praying that you know god will perfect everything and everything will work out for good in jesus name amen thank you guys for watching let me go and have my bath and make puff puff okay i'm the only one at home we're in summer break so i'm working i'm not schooling um all my roommates have left they left like a month ago so the house is to me so I cook whenever I want and I enjoy my life. Okay. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I hope you enjoyed this relocation vlog. I'm sure this will be like the first video. The next you see me is like moving, selling things, trying to move my things and settling in the UK, seeing my sister, my niece. I've missed my niece so much. And yeah, we'll see. Okay. Anyways, I'll remember to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe, and let me know what you guys think. Until we meet again, I still remain Victoria. I did a fashion, but I'm missing one, okay? Bye. <laughs>